Okay. Are we shooting? Okay. Somebody asked how to solder a silver ring, so I'm going to do a real quick and dirty video and just explain it as quick as I can without getting into technicalities. But first, Nick, hand me the camera. I guess to see. Trusty sidekick Nick, trusty sidekick Hannah and Haley over there. So, all right. Y'all can go back to what y'all were doing. So. Okay. Typical sterling silver wedding band. I just cut it to solder it in place. Taking some blow, bow closing pliers, closing my joint up. Now, Nick right here. Green flux, white flux. The main difference between silver and gold, okay? One of them requires oxygen in order to solder. One of them requires the lack of oxygen to solder. Can't remember which one is which. One of the fluxes does one, one of the fluxes does the other. All you need to remember, green flux gold, white flux silver. So, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. First thing, dip it in boric acid. light it on fire. Now, you need to understand something known as the principles of thermodynamics and thermal transfer. And everything transfers thermal energy at a given rate. Silver and gold are very different. Alright, now, Nick, I want you to kind of zoom in on this area right here. And I'm just going to do something, and I'm looking for something. If I don't get it, it's not that important in this video. I didn't get it. Okay, so. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I want to solder the top of this ring right here. I'm going to use white flux. But you know what? Dang it. I want what I want to happen here. All right, I'm going to get it this time. All right. Let me turn this light off here. Let me turn this light off. All right. So kind of zoom in on this area here, Nick. Mm, I'll shoot a better video for what I'm looking for. All right, let's solder this ring. What happens? Because sterling silver transfers heat so fast that, that you have to understand, like we got back to, thermal transfer, thermal energy, that you have two opposing forces here. Heat is going to flow to the coldest point. Your solder is going to flow to the hottest point. So if you look at this ring, if I want to solder right here, and I put my torch right here, because heat flows to the coldest point, the coldest point is down here, okay? So if I'm heating this area and my heat is going down here, I have zero control over this area right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut a piece of my solder, I'm gonna take my torch and the solder pick in my bench. So, a lot of people would put the solder right here and try to solder it, okay? But the heat is going down here. So if I want to control this, I'm going to start down here, okay? Because what I am going to do is make the top of this ring the coldest point. So as I'm heating all of this, and all of this is hot, now when I come in here to heat this, then I can now control my heat there because my heat is staying here. But second thing, because your solder goes to the co or excuse me, your solder goes to the hottest point. So if I have the solder on the top and I want the solder to flow through the joint, here's how we're going to do that. All right, Nick, let me get this and get focused in. All right, we're going to start down here. I'm going to get my solder right on top of that joint. I'm going to preheat all of this, okay? So now I'm not losing my heat. So now where I want my solder to flow is the coldest point of the ring. I'm going to go here. Just I'm going to make it flow. And as it starts to flow, I'm going to bring my torch underneath. 
and I'm going to make the hottest point of that ring underneath there. And you see that solder flow through there? Was that not just pretty as heck? So, all right. So, in just to reiterate, uh, preheat your ring so the area you want to solder is the coldest point. When your solder starts to flow, put your torch underneath it to make underneath the hottest point and your solder will flow to it. And use the white flux. And that is how easy it is to do. So, all right, bye.